Okay, uh, welcome back. Uh, so, in the last class, we have uh, started our discussion on line defects or dislocations, and wherein we have discussed that the stress required to plastically deform a crystal, a real crystal, is much less than the stress calculated for a perfect crystal. And we said that the reason for that uh, reduction in uh, stress required for imparting plastic, uh, plastic deformation is due to uh, some uh, sort of defects called line defects, or also known as uh, dislocations. And we have also uh, discussed that uh, the concept of dislocations was invented by Oravon Taylor and uh, Polanyi in uh, 1934. Although they did not observe them experimentally, the theoretically they have uh, hypothesized that uh, uh, defects such as uh, line defects should be existing in order uh, to confirm with the, uh, the reduction in plastic uh, reduction in stress for plastic deformation for real crystals. However, the first experimental observation of uh, dislocation was made in 1947. So, uh, in this class we will look at uh, more details about uh, the nature of uh, the dislocations and then uh, the details therein. So, here uh, we uh, have a bubble raft experiment as uh, is done by uh, the Cambridge material science course. So, here this I have borrowed it from the Cambridge material science course available freely on web. Uh, at this particular link, wherein you can actually have a lot of information about the dislocations. So, the way to create such a bubble raft has also been explained in that uh, uh, web resource. I encourage all of you to go through the go to this web resource and see how this bubble raft has been created. So, if you look at this uh, particular bubble raft, you can see certain uh, uh, point defects. For instance, you can see a defect here, a defect there a defect here, all of them are uh, point defects. So, here and then you would see uh, this is an interstitial uh, defect and here you can see a substitutional defect and so on. Right? So, this is your uh, different kinds of defects and those are point defects and now if you see here in this line uh, where the line is shown there is a continuous uh, line of atoms and here also a line of atoms, but here you have only half plane of atoms. So, half line of atoms. So, this imagine this line represents a plane in the outer plane direction and you have atoms in that there. right? So, such a defect which has only an extra half plane and other half plane is missing below it is such a defect is what you call dislocation. And this is something that one can create using a bubble raft, bubble raft experiment as shown here. Uh, similarly, such line defects and point defects can also be observed in uh, uh, corn, sweet corn. If you buy a sweet corn and then uh, uh, if you look at the sweet corn, you will see the white uh, colored ones and yellow colored yellow colored uh, corn seeds and then the, the difference in color sort of represents your point defects, but also you can nicely observe certain kinds of uh, 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 line defects such as dislocations. All right. So, now let us look at uh, the slip caused due to shear stress by the two mechanisms that we were discussing the by glide of plane of atoms as compared to uh, the dislocation. So, we will see how this uh, deformation takes place. So, this here in this uh, animation we will see the meaning of slip by a glide of a plane of atoms. So, the what basically here is happening is that all the bonds atomic bonds are uh, broken at once and then recreated. So, if you can uh, you can see that here this atom bond all these bonds are broken and then again recreated with the neighboring atoms. Basically, the neighbors. So, this guy was a neighbor to this guy previous uh, before the slip has happened. Now, this became a neighbor to this guy. So, that is basically your plastic deformation because the neighbors are changing. right? So, there is a breakage of bonds. And now, if you look at slip by dislocation motion, you can see that here you have an extra half plane and here the plane of atoms are not available. And now, if you are applying shear stress as shown here and we can see that the slip can be seen as the motion of this dislocation, this defect line defect moving from left end to right end. Right? So, that is the difference between slip by a glide of plane of atoms, all the planes of atoms are uh, breaking their bonds at the simultaneously and then re-establishing as compared to the dislocation where one 
bond is broken and then that bond uh, again re established and so on. So, that is basically the difference between dislocation motion and slip and in real material because of the presence of such defects you can have plastic formation by dislocation motion because it causes it, it requires much less energy compared to glide of atoms all right. So, the stress required for slip the theoretical shear strength when we have calculated is given by this uh, expression tau max is equal to g b by 2 pi a where b is interatomic spacing in the plane that is called Burgess vector and a is interplanar spacing right. This is derivation we have seen already uh, uh, in the discussion in the previous class. And now the shear stress required for slip by dislocation motion is also is uh, this expression was derived by Pearl and Nabarro. So, that is why it is called Pearl Nabarro stress tau p is given by g times e power minus 2 pi a by 1 minus nu times b which can also be written as 3 g times e power minus 2 pi w by b v, where b is Burgess vector w is your dislocation core width. So, what is the size of the dislocation core? If your dislocation if your Burgess vector is equal to dislocation core width for this uh, simple uh, situation the tau p this should have been tau p can have a maximum value of g by 180 right. So, this is our shear stress required for causing slip by dislocation motion whereas, this is the shear stress required uh, for causing slip uh, by by glade of plane of atoms and you can see that this value is much smaller than the theoretical strength shear strength that is predicted and that is how the shear strength requ required for causing slip by dislocation motion has been given by this Paul Nabarro stress which is a better approximation to the real value of shear stress required it's as compared to the theoretical shear strength all right so here we can see how does a caterpillar move uh, so you can see that the caterpillar basically does not uh, move by slipping but it will actually lift the area that is uh, between two uh, legs and then push that it will create a hump and then slip that hump and again uh, create a hump again after some uh, 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 after moving the real hump and effectively it moves it makes a uh, uh, motion in the direction of its requirement right. So, this caterpillar motion can be seen as uh, analogous to the dis or dislocation motion can be seen as an analogous to the motion of a caterpillar all right. So, the dislocations as we have already discussed are line defects. So, you have a, a plane of atoms here which are an extra half plane if this is not there it would have been a perfect crystal, but because of this extra half plane then this becomes a crystal with a defect a line defect and when you are applying shear stress this way this extra half plane is moving to the right eventually slipping right. So, this will cause unit slip and the amount of uh, slip caused is actually equal to the uh, distance uh, interatomic distance and that is basically uh, represented by a special vector called Burgess vector we will look at it uh, uh, in certain uh, uh, in couple of uh, minutes right. So, here this particular defect is called an edge dislocation and you can see that if you see in the out of plane direction. So, you have seen this symbol which is shown like this. So, this basically represents that you have an extra half plane of atoms that this plane of atoms in the outer if you the plane plane is in the outer plane direction right. And then you have so, this is your extra half plane. So, that means the extra half plane is existing above this plane and below that there is no extra half plane right. So, this is the representation of an edge dislocation and if your extra half plane is not is actually available at the bottom rather than at the top then you would describe the edge dislocation as like that. So, basically this line represents the presence of extra half plane or the line defect ok. This type of defect is what we call edge dislocation. And so, as we have been discussing the dislocation motion can be analogous to the caterpillar motion. So, both of them are analog analogous. So, here this is analogous to your uh, the half plane extra half plane and this extra half plane when it moves basically causes slip and the amount of slip that is caused is equal to the amount of uh, distance that the caterpillar would have moved by moving this hump towards this edge 
right all right so in the bubble raft you can see that uh, these are what we call closed packet directions that means the interplan atomic spacing in those uh, directions is minimal right so for as if you take this direction the interatomic spacing is actually a larger than this guy so these are all our closed pack directions and it is important to realize these closed pack directions because later in the tomorrow's class we will see why these closed pack directions are important all right so now if you take this bubble raft and you uh, we can see when you are applying a state of compression we will see that uh, the dislocations are uh, moving under the action of compression and there are uh, you can observe the dislocation motion uh, happening in these uh, bubble raft two dimensional system i encourage uh, you to go through in order to visualize the movie i encourage you to go through this link wherein these movies are available and you can see how the dislocation motion is happening under the action of compression and as well as under the action of shear stress right here you can see under the action of shear stress this movie you can see that the dislocations are moving under the action of shear stress eventually causing see here you can see the dislocation moving and so on all right so uh, dislocations are basically uh, classified into two classes one is called edge dislocation and screw dislocation so if you see this uh, this is what we are calling extra half plane of atoms throughout the system and this line is what you call dislocation line that is our dislocation line so the end of the extra half plane is a line so all the atoms connecting the end of uh, atoms at the end of the extra half plane if you connect a line in the outer plane direction here that will represent our dislocation line okay and now if you are applying shear stress in this direction then the slip takes place in this direction and then eventually you will have slip of that kind okay so the dislocation in the case of energy dislocation the dislocation line that is this guy moves in the direction of the applied shear stress if you are applying shear stress in this direction the dislocation line also moves in the same direction because the dislocation is moving in that direction and the second figure this figure represents shows uh, another kind of dislocation called screw dislocation here so that is our dislocation line we are not able to see that uh, it's hidden there and when you are applying shear stress this dislocation line moves here eventually causing same kind of deformation so the dislocation line moves in the direction now the dislocation line is moving in this way whereas shear stress is applied in that direction so this is going perpendicular to the applied shear stress so the dislocation line moves in the direction perpendicular to the applied shear stress and such a dislocation is called screw dislocation however although the dislocation line motion is different the net plastic deformation in both the cases is the same okay that means the, the amount of slip caused is same and in the same direction so this is uh, an example another example of uh, edge dislocation and screw dislocation these are called uh, the volterra dislocations because uh, volterra has given this idea so if you take a sheet of paper okay and roll it until the edges touch each other then that is sort of a representation of a perfect crystal but if you roll it in such a way you make it a cylinder in such a way that the ends are this end normally if it meets here then it would have been a perfect crystal but if you are slipping by this amount then this is what we call the representation of an edge dislocation okay so when you are starting here and by the time you come here you are in the same plane but you are off by certain amount so equal to this width so that is what we call an edge dislocation and instead of doing that instead of slipping in in this direction if you move this plane a little but upwards then you can see that this is our screw dislocation this is similar to the parking lots that are there in the shopping uh, shopping complexes right so you actually in the parking lots that are there in the shopping complexes so you, uh, you will go around the parking lot if you make one round you start at the ground floor and you make one round and you go to the next floor right that is what you are basically doing so you are actually going around this line this axis and then by the time you reach here you are going to the next round this is behaving like a screw when you are uh, uh, rotating a thread 
on a screw the thread uh, uh, sorry uh, when you are rotating a nut on a screw thread when we make one rotation the nut would have moved upwards right by equal to uh, the pitch of the uh, screw thread. So, similarly that because this motion creates such a deformation and hence this is called a screw dislocation. So, this is a perfect crystal in 2D and here we are showing in 3D because uh, so this 2D picture is good enough to explain the bogus vector uh, of edge dislocation whereas 3D picture is required for explaining the bogus vector of screw dislocation ok. So, now let us say when we want to understand so now basically we know that you, when you have an edge dislocation when you are applying shear stress you will get a slip you will have a slip and in order to understand the direction of the slip and the magnitude the direction of the slip and its magnitude is described by a quantity called bogus vector. So, now let us say you are at position m right. So, let us say you are at this point and now if it is a perfect crystal if you make a loop. So, this is our starting point and I am going 1, 2, 3 steps vertically and 4 steps horizontally. Then again I, I go in the opposite direction 3 steps and again in the opposite direction of the horizontal displacement 4 steps I go back to. So, starting position and ending position are the same that it happens when you have a perfect crystal or in the loop there are no defects. Now, let us take this situation wherein you have an extra half plane here this is an extra half plane. So, now I am starting at m ok. So, now I am moving 1 unit 2 3 units vertically and 1 2 3 4 units horizontally. So, since I came down 3 units I go up 3 units like that and then since I have uh, moved how, how many units of horizontal uh, horizontally 1 2 3 4 4, horizon, 4 units horizontally to the left. So, now I move to the right 1 2 3 4. So, I stopped at q right. So, that is my starting point and that is my finish point and if I draw a vector from start to finish and that is what I call my bogus vector. Okay. So, the bogus vector represents the direction in which slip is taking place and the magnitude this will be the magnitude that you would have by moving uh, uh, by causing the dislocation motion through the dislocation motion right. Now, we will also see how the uh, the bogus vector. So, you can see clearly see that if your uh, direction of the slip is like that then the bogus vector is also in the same direction of your slip, but you can see that this is your dislocation and the dislocation line is in the per out of the outer plane direction perpendicular. So, when you are applying slip like this the dislocation line is also moving the dislocation suppose if you are applying slip the dislocation line also moving in this direction and a bogus vector is also moving in the same direction that is what we said when we have defined edge dislocation the dislocation line and the bogus vector uh, and the slip up, uh, that the dislocation line moves in the same direction as the applied shear stress and the bogus vector here also is in the same direction as applied shear stress and the motion of the dislocation ok. All right. So, now let us look at uh, the bogus vector in the case of uh, uh, screw dislocation not here, but at a uh, later stage I will show you a, a detailed view of looking at screw dislocation in a moment. So, uh, the bogus vector what is the meaning of bogus vector? Bogus vector describes the magnitude and direction of the lattice distortion associated with the dislocation and it is expressed as the bogus vector. The mag so, the basically it represents the magnitude and direction of the lattice distortion associated with the dislocation motion. And the nature of the dislocation is identified by the relative orientation of the dislocation line and bogus vector. So, the bogus vector uh, the dislocation line and the bogus vector are perpendicular to each other that is when it is called an edge dislocation as we have seen here. And for metals the bogus vector will point in close pack direction with magnitude equal to the interatomic spacing because the close pack directions is, is the direction in which your slip takes place. And the dislocation density what do we mean by dislocation density this is a quantity that describes the total length of dislocations in your material per 
unit volume of the material. So, you know, if you take a unit volume of material, what is the total length of all the dislocations, right. So, that the unit will be for instance, for in, uh, if you take a carefully solidified materials, the unit will be uh, something like uh, the value of dislocation density will be something like 1000 mm of length of dislocations per millimeter cube of uh, sample. So, 10 power 3 per mm square is the dislocation density. So, in some some people also describe the dislocation density as number of dislocations per unit area that is also another way people de describe, but the uh, the better definition for dislocation density is the length of the dislocations per unit volume of the material. If you have heavily deformed material or heavily deformed steel metals, then the dislocation density is going to be very very high right. You can see almost uh, 10 power 10 mm per mm cube. So, extremely high. So, almost 6 orders of magnitude from the uh, carefully solidified material to extremely deformed material. So, that means, during deformation the dislocations multiply significantly increasing the density of dislocations significantly. So, the persons responsible for the, uh, the description of uh, the magnitude and direction of lattice distortion through the Burgess vector. So, the concept of Burgess vector was uh, invented by the two scientists, two brothers, two professors at Delphi University, John Martinus Berger and uh, Wilhelm Berger. So, these two people are responsible for the definition of this Burgess vector. So, this is a typical TEM image, transmission electron microscopy image of dislocations in titanium alloy at looked at a magnification of 51450 and you can see these lines these are our dislocations. All right. So, how do we go about looking at screw dislocation as we have discussed. So, this is our dislocation line and you can see that by applying deformation the screw dislocation. So, you can see that it will make one unit slip uh, in the. So, this is our dislocation line and the Burgess vector is parallel to the dislocation line is opposed to being perpendicular in the case of edge dislocation. So, the in the if you see this uh, top view of this figure, you can see this A B is our dislocation line and all uh, the open circles uh, uh, represent the atoms in the top layer and the, uh, the dark circles represents the atoms in the bottom layer. So, the upper front region of the crystal is shifted by one atomic distance to the right relative to the bottom portion as you can see here. Usually, the as edge dislocation as we have discussed an edge dislocation is represented by a symbol like that, a screw dislocation is usually represented by a symbol like that. Okay. So, now let us look at uh, how do we go about defining this Burgess vector we have shown this here. right? So, let me let us say we start there and we are going 1, 2, 3, 4 units down here and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units to the left and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units to the up. And so, again we have to go back uh, right to the right we have to make 6 units and since we already made 4 units here and remaining 2 units because you have gone 6 units here. So, I have to go by 2 units and then you will end there that is our end point. So, you have not come back to its origin your original position. When we are making this loop, we should ensure that you are actually going around the defect. If you are not going around the defect, you will find that it is a perfect crystal. So, for instance, if you make such a loop in this region, you will see that you are coming back to its original configuration. That means, this loop is not uh, including the defect. Here, this loop, this green loop is actually including the defect and hence your start position and end, position, end positions are different. So, if you see that, that is how you have and that is our start position and that is our end position and as you again as we have discussed in the previous uh, uh, case of edge dislocation if you draw a vector from start to finish that is that is what represents your Burgess vector which represents the amount of slip and the direction of the slip and you can see that the Burgess vector here is parallel to the dislocation line. However, uh, you the Burgess vector direction is also parallel to the slip direction here. All right, so, the open circles are plane above and the solid circles are plane below for the screw dislocation. So, the Burgess vector is parallel to the dislocation line in screw type whereas, in edge type that is perpendicular to the dislocation line. All right, so, here we have another uh, 
uh, system wherein you have mixed dislocations here you have a screw type and here you can have an edge type dislocation. So, that means several real materials not necessarily have only pure edge type or pure screw type you may have mixed dislocations. So, in the case of mixed dislocations, so you here this is our dislocation line. So, here it has screw nature, here it has pure edge nature, in between it has a partial screw nature and partial edge nature. What, what is the meaning of that? That means, with respect to the dislocation line here in this region the bogus vector will be parallel to the dislocation line, in this region the bogus will vector will be perpendicular to the dislocation line. We can clearly see that this is uh, the dislocation line is like that and then the bogus vector is like that. So, that is perpendicular, but in between the uh, bogus vector will not be either parallel or perpendicular it will be at certain angle to the dislocation line. And note that in this figure the dislocation is may change its nature. So, the dislocation is changing its nature being uh, screw here to the edge here, but the direction the bogus vector will not change its sense. In all the cases the bogus vector's direction is the same it is only the dislocation line that is changing its direction. That means, the nature of the dislocation is changing eventually the bogus vector direction is remaining the same that is an important uh, concept to understand. All right. So, now let us uh, look at the characteristics of uh, dislocations. So, the plastic deformation in metals uh, usually leads to increase in internal energy and dissipation as heat. And so, when you are applying uh, external stress there is lot some amount of plastic deformation and but lot of amount of energy is dissipated as heat and some amount of energy is stored as strain energy and this strain energy is usually associated with the dislocations. And so, if you can see this figure here if this extra half plane was not present this would have been a perfect crystal, but because of this inclusion of this extra half plane what happens you will have the atoms in this region which are uh, close to the extra half plane are sort of squeezed together, whereas the atoms below the extra half plane are uh, pulled apart right, because the atoms on the uh, extra half plane above the plane. So, above this so let us say this above this plane you have an extra half plane of atoms there the atoms are squeezed together and as a result the atoms just above the dislocation line or adjacent to the dislocation line start feeling a state of compression because they are squeezed together and the atoms below are sort of feeling state of tension for in the case of an edge dislocation and then the atom somewhere elsewhere in uh, not uh, immediately above or immediately below might feel a state of uh, shear right. So, the tensile compressive and shear lattice strains are so possible for edge dislocation whereas, for screw dislocation only you will have shear lattice strains. So, the lattice distortions take place as strain fluids uh, emanating from strain fluids are emanating from dislocation line because of the presence of this extra half plane. So, when you have an extra half plane here, so you will have the region which is uh, having this extra half plane will experience state of compression and energy dislocation and the one below experiences a state of tension all right. And now, if you have two dislocations for instance here having same sign in the same uh, uh, slip plane. So, the plane in which the slip is taking place. So, basically here you can see that if you are applying force uh, shear, shear stress the slip takes place in this plane right. So, if you have two such dislocations of same sign. So, this is what we mean by sign. So, this is something called positive edge dislocation and let us say this is what you call negative edge dislocation right. If you have same sign of dislocations in the same plane in the say identical slip plane then when they are coming close to each other then they try to repel each other because this is the atom planes are having sort of uh, squeezing together and this will also have a squeezing uh, together kind of a uh, uh, stress strain field. As a result you see that when these two of same sign are coming together then you will see that sort of they are repelling each other. So, either positive edge dislocation or negative negative edge dislocation. However, two dislocations are of opposite sign and again in the same slip plane are coming together what happens is they attract each other in order to annihilate 
they annihilate and become a perfect crystal right because you have an extra half plane here extra half plane here and these two become a perfect crystal so that means the dislocations can either repel each other attract each other by attracting they annihilate so the, that means the dislocations actually can interact and during plastic deformation the dislocation density increases drastically the number of dislocations start increasing and the strain fields associated uh, with these dislocations and the associated forces what cause something called strengthening mechanisms that means that leads to a, spe uh, uh, a special property called strengthening for the crystal lattice and we will discuss about this uh, strengthening mechanism so basically when you have a dislocation of opposite sign coming together uh, due to differ, uh, plastic deformation they start dis uh, repelling each other that means what the dislocation motion which would have been happened if the dislocation the same sign dislocation is not there this dislocation would have moved this way but because of the fact that this dislocation there is another dislocation which is of opposite sign this the deformation further deformation of these dis two dislocations cannot happen that means the dislocation motion is sort of impeded and that will require additional higher strain to overcome the resistance caused by the resistance offered by these repelling force fields of the same sign dislocations and that is what is seen as an increased strength of the crystal lattice okay so we can discuss about these uh, different kinds of strengthening mechanisms from the characteristics of uh, dislocations in the next class thank you very much